Hello, my name is David Traburn. I'm a paranormal researcher currently working at the State College. I guess you could say that the paranormal world, the, uh, the world that supposedly exists outside of our normal sensory channels, has intrigued me for the better part of my life. Since I was eight, to be perfectly honest. The presentation you're about to see addresses the age-old question. Is there something after death? This is about an experiment, or maybe an, an observation. No, um, no, it was, it was more like an attempt to document the events that took place at the home of Professor Marcus Gates, 14 months after the death of his wife, Helen. At the time, I had known Marcus for a few years. Uh, it's, it's probably helpful for you to know that Helen's death was quite unexpected and it hit Marcus and his two daughters, Jennifer and Katie, very hard. Now, he often joked about my line of work, but then one day he came to me, almost desperate. I could tell that something was going on, so I agreed to help him, or at least try, to figure out what that may be. The presentation you're about to see has not been altered or tampered with. What you're about to see and hear is, in my opinion, beyond anything that has been legitimately documented to this day. I'm a spiritual man who was raised in a, a traditional home. And what I carried away from this experience goes against much of what I was raised on. But I witnessed it. In my opinion, modern beliefs tend to oversimplify the afterlife their perception of it, what's out there after death, what else might be out there that perhaps was never alive to begin with. Well, I now believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there is something out there. But what that something is, He said he heard one of us screaming. Screaming what? Just screaming. And it wasn't you or your sister? No, Katie was asleep and I was studying. And you didn't hear anything? No. So what do you think's going on here? When Mom died, it was really hard on him. It was really hard on all of us. But Dad... Dad just hasn't been himself. In what way? He's been really emotional. He wasn't like that before. It's like... It's like when Mom died, someone turned one switch on him off and another one on. He just stormed into my room in a panic. It really freaked me out. So you didn't hear a scream? Mm -mm. So, this is the beginning of my... You heard that, didn't you? Dad? Jen? Of course I did. Katie? Katie said that I scared her. Well, I didn't mean to do that. I just thought that there was something happening to one of them. What? Well, I, I think they're just concerned. So, how would you explain it? There wasn't a, a TV or a radio on? No. Then I, I couldn't explain it. At least not yet. Let's see what we can accomplish with the toys. This camera's a lot bigger than Dad's. Yeah, that's the one we'll be using for this. It specs out better and it's high def. When are we getting started? After we eat. Dad's getting pizza on his way home. Loaded with mushrooms, I bet. Yeah. So this is the stuff you use? Sometimes. What do you mean sometimes? I've seen those people that hunt ghosts on TV. They have a lot more than this. That's because I don't hunt ghosts. I investigate places that are already established as haunted. So then what are you doing here? 
Your dad's a friend. So none of this stuff is used to hunt ghosts? Oh, no, no, it's all used. It's just not all that they use. I still think this is a waste of time. What is that thing? Oh, uh, EMF meter. EMF? Electromagnetic field. It measures changes in electromagnetic radiation flux density. How have we gotten along all this time without one? <laughs> well, it's believed that the energy from spirits can alter the surrounding electromagnetic field. Now, it's not something that we can feel physically, but sensitive instruments can detect it. Oh, and in the same way, devices like this uh, digital audio recorder are often used to try and uh, capture EVPs. Uh, same with uh, video recorders and even older tape recorders. So do I need to ask the question, or can you just oh, assume uh, that we don't know EVP, what EVP is? Yeah, it stands for electronic voice phenomenon. Uh, like a... Uh, spirit boards or seances, many believe that this is another way to directly communicate with ghosts. And you really believe all this? Um, I believe in the technology, sure. But, uh, does it prove anything? You gotta be kidding me. No, I'm not. I swear. I totally don't so believe So you talk it. to spirits through a tape recorder? It's a digital recorder. Look, you, you hit record and you ask questions much like you would with the spirit board. But, instead of a, a pointer spelling out the answer, you get the answer in audible form. They just talk to you. Well, it's not quite that simple. If you get an answer, it's generally a very garbled noise that's open to a wide interpretation. Then why do you need the thing? Why don't you just talk to the ghosts? Well, like I said, it's a lot more sensitive than the human ear, so it can pick up on stuff that we can't hear before it's digitized. Have you ever heard any of these EVPs? Yeah. Hundreds. Some are very convincing. So you do believe in ghosts? Uh, I believe in the possibility of ghosts. I mean, the idea fascinates me, but I don't think it's possible to prove that ghosts exist. Well, why not? Well, for something to be proven, it has to be irrefutable. It has to be acceptable to everyone. Like, uh, a hydrogen atom has one electron. Um, the sky is blue, the earth has one moon, irrefutable. But uh, spanking children is appropriate, or uh, uh, the death penalty is hypocrisy, war is not the answer, the spirit of the dead walk among us. Until you can put a ghost under a microscope and deliver hard scientific evidence, you're not going to be able to rip it out of the realm of belief and opinion. And you don't think that could ever happen? Well, the global warming debate. It has hard scientific evidence around it. And how are we doing with agreeing on that? <laughs> you see, it, it doesn't matter what side of an emotionally charged topic you're on. Some people just can't give up their teddy bear. What does it say? Well, it's not so much what it says, but how it changes. You, uh, you read a room a few times and see if there's any uh, variation. And if there is, it means there's a ghost? No, it just means that the electromagnetic field's been altered. Remember, this thing measures energy, so uh, TVs, appliances, uh, computers being turned on and off, all will alter it as well. The hell was that? The front door? That must be home. Okay, we're all set in here. Was this room different? Uh. Yeah, there's a slightly higher uh, activity in here. You got ghosts, bitch. My computer's on, Blondie. I wonder if it's a guy. Maybe a cute guy. Shut up. Sure, he's dead, but the two of you could work through that. My room is not haunted. <laughs> oh, that must be him right now. You're such a germ. Hello? Dad? We thought you were home. Maybe something fell. You guys have any pets or anything? We have a cat, but he's outside most of the time. Well, the levels are fairly high in here. No TV or computer on. Nothing in the kitchen. David says the levels are fairly high in here. Does that mean anything? Whoa, whoa, hold on. There's just a spike in the levels. It just happened again. Did you just hear something? I didn't hear anything. No. Oh! Oh! Shh! Dad, you scared the shit out of us! What's going on? I'm 
honestly, I think a big case of active imagination. No, it's like Katie told you on the phone. We thought we heard you come home when we were upstairs. No, yeah, we heard a noise and then Jen thought it was the front door. So we came down and looked around and uh, I thought I heard something. <laughs> you slammed the door really gave us all heart attacks. <laughs> See what I started? No, no. Really, what? What's all that? Uh, well, this is a DVR. Uh, like I said, this room had the highest EMF reading, and well, it's also where you heard the scream. So I set this area up for you to run the camera overnight. Now the DVR will record up to 150 hours of video, so I'll dump it in a week or so, and we'll take a look at what we got. You just want to run a camera in an empty room? Well, it's not quite empty. Uh, I've set the station up for you with a, an EMF a motion detector and a digital audio recorder. Now, the EMF is tied into this box, so if it detects a change, this light will switch from green to red. Very interesting. And uh, the digital audio recorder is plugged into the auxiliary channel of the DVR, so that'll be synchronized to the video. Pretty impressive. Uh, actually, it's pretty elementary for this kind of thing. I mean, true ghost hunters have multiple cameras throughout the house, and uh, temperature meters, night vision cameras, you wouldn't believe the extent of it. Oh, you'd be surprised at what I believe at this point. I'll go to her. Uh, yeah. Funny guy. Oh. After going through the house and recording the different EMF readings for each room, I set up a station for Marcus to park the camera overnight in the living room, which seemed like the likeliest location to capture any extraordinary activity. I have to admit, I didn't entirely take him seriously. I mean, he'd just recently lost his wife. He was trying to balance his professional life with his family life as a newly single father. He was under a lot of stress. If I knew then what I know now, I would have checked that DVR every day. Things are winding down this evening. I guess you could call this day three of our attempt to prove that something paranormal has taken place in this house. I don't feel nearly as on edge as I did a few days ago, but then again, I don't think that I ever really described what happened to me that shook me up so much. It was started off with the little things, um, objects. Like my phone or my wallet, they wouldn't be where I remembered putting them. And just the other day, I could have swore that I heard the girls downstairs when I knew that they were out. I guess that's kind of like that big bang that the girls heard the other day, thinking that it was me. A few days ago, I, I went to bed as usual, and I was laying on my side with the back to the door, and I always kept the door ajar. It was a... Uh, a little habit that I did when the girls were young. Anyway, uh, I was just about to settle in. And well, I know that I wasn't asleep because sometimes it takes me 20 or 30 minutes to fall asleep, but just then, I felt someone lay down next to me. And it, w it wasn't just the movement in the bed, it, I could feel them or it. Well, I heard my name. I heard Marcus whispered in my ear, plain as day. And then I heard the door close. So. I jumped up and I ran to the door and I opened it and there, there was no one there. Nobody. David and the girls suggested that I uh, dreamt it. That all of these things that have been happening to me have caused me to imagine it. Well, that was the night that I started drinking.
night that I saw Ellen. It was the night that I decided that I was going to document all of this. But don't they say it's easier to receive messages from the dead when you're close to sleep? Mom didn't whisper to him. How do you know? Just drop it, Kitty. You're supposed to leave that plugged into the system unless something happens. Something is happening. You guys are doing the dishes. I'm not in the mood, Kat. Even scarier than a ghost. Kitty, it's late. Yeah, I know. Dad says he saw Mom. I believe him. Things have been weird around here for a while now, and he's not the only one hearing things. Jen doesn't want to see it, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. This is my mom. She made the best chocolate chip cookies. She put macadamia nuts in them. She jogged five miles a day, and she ate healthy, and she never had a thing wrong with her. She had a heart attack and died, writing out a check to my volleyball team's fundraiser. That's why life is just one big lie. But if there were someone that could come back and make contact with their family, it would be her. She had that kind of drive. I love you, Mom. Oh, oh, David, by the way, Jen thinks you're kind of cute. Night, night. This is what I found when I got home from practice today. Jen will say I did it, but I didn't. I'm just a little freaked out right now. Don't you think that's weird, though? Of course it's weird. If it really happened. I knew you were going to say I made it up. Things don't just move by themselves, Kitty. So you're just saying I'm a liar? No, I'm not. What about Dad's keys the other day? And his wallet? Well, the way that he's been drinking lately, I'm amazed he can remember anything. Do you have something to say to me? Only that you're becoming a lush. You have no business talking to me like that. And you have no business putting away the booze like you have been lately. Get that camera out of my face. Are you concerned about him? Concerned? Yeah, I guess so. Worried? Nah. You know, people grieve in different ways. From my perspective, your, your dad dodged a lot of his feelings over losing your mom. And all this has really caused him to, uh, to, to look at it for the first time. Or at least, you know, deal with it on a deeper level than he has in the past. It, it actually could be what's causing the events. 
You mean all this ridiculous ghost stuff? Yeah. How could he be causing all this? Well, they've done studies on how high levels of emotional distress can actually cause physical manifestations surrounding the subject. It's actually one of the theories behind poltergeist. I don't believe in that either. Well, come on, Jen, you gotta admit. There's weird stuff going on around here. How come you don't go through more tapes if the camera's on all night? Oh, when you're plugged into the DVR, the camera's just on. It's not recording. The DVR is actually doing the recording. Um, you only switch the tape when you unplug the, plug the camera. So you looked at any of the footage yet? No. The DVR sells most of the drive free, so we'll give it a few more days and transfer it then. I got a couple of work study students who are going to watch it. They're going to earn those checks. <laughs> Alright. You got fresh tape, so you're good to go. Great. Anything happen the last few days? Just think with my keys and get in the doors. But no more noises? Not that I've heard. Jen? You heard any noises over the past couple nights? Just you snoring. We're dealing with a slight case of self-righteousness here lately. Alright then. You guys are all set. Oh, uh, dinner morning? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. 6.30. Ah, sounds good. See you, Jen. See ya. Scat! You need to get in here and clean up this mess. Cat? Kitchen! You feel good about your test? Want to do one more? Yeah, I think, you know, I did really good. And, um. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you bring out the camera. The evening's been so pleasant up until now. Oh, I want everyone out there to know that when they put their mind to it, the Gates plan can kick out a pretty impressive spread. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Dinner was, it was incredible. And I want everyone to know that my still single colleague is here for dinner this particular night because he absolutely has no idea that I remembered that today I is know. his birthday. <laughs> Guys, oh. Yay. Now listen, the whole family's tone deaf, so I hope you weren't expecting a song. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get you back for this. Sleep with one eye open. Okay, blow it out. Oh yeah, but make a wish first. I'll get the plate. Yeah. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> This is really good. Not quite as good as the lasagna, but it's still really good. So, what got you into this? What, uh, chocolate cake and lasagna? No, parapsychology. Hmm. I mean, who isn't fascinated by the concept? Even you, our resident skeptics, ask more than a few questions. So, it's not just sheer curiosity? I thought that was the stuff made of hobbies, not careers. Well, 
When, uh, when I was a kid, most of my extended family lived in the same house. It was um, my parents, me and my two brothers, one of my uncles and his wife, and my grandmother, Nana. She, uh, she loved spending time with me and my brothers. She used to tell us the most amazing stories, and she was just this really incredible person. She, uh, she also used to tuck us in every night. And um, one night, see, I was eight. Um, she came into my room and tucked me in as usual, but then she remained there sitting on the, the edge of the bed for a lot longer than normal. She smiled at me and she said, I love you, Davy, and I want you to remember that that's something that never goes away. I, uh, I later found out that she had been taken to the hospital that morning while I was at school. She died that night in the hospital before I even went to bed. You're shitting me. No. No, it's a true story. It could have been a dream. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. But then my two brothers had the very same dream. She visited them as well. She said the same thing to them that she said to me. Holy shit. Catherine, language. Now, the funny thing is, we didn't even realize that it happened to each other until years later. We'd each just kept it to ourselves. And uh, one Christmas, it just it came up. And the three of us were, were shocked that she would visited each of us in, in the same way. You're kidding. Hmm. No. It's, um, it's actually why I dropped out of divinity school. Started studying parapsychology. Yeah, that and the whole celibacy thing is probably a drag. <laughs> Wouldn't you think? Girls are in bed. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry yet. How many meanings can you squeeze out of that one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
I'm sorry. So, what are you doing? Tell me again, what happened to you last night? Nothing happened. Okay, yeah, but what happened? Nothing. What happened? Dad had a dream about Mom. It wasn't about Mom, she was just in it. What did she say? She didn't say anything. Are you okay, Jim? Yeah, I'll be fine as soon as Ace Reporter here stops interrogating me. <laughs> Kat, leave your sister alone. She said it scared her. What scared you about it? Nothing scared me. Why can't you keep your stupid mouth shut? It's perfectly normal to dream about Dad, life. I am not five, okay? Why don't you just drop it? Both of you. God. So what did she say? She said she had a dream about Mom and it scared her, so I told her to hold on and I turned the camera around. Which you do way too much. I thought we were supposed to be documenting what's happening around here. It's just that it's all a little bit too intrusive. You know how she felt about it to begin with. You know, jamming a camera in front of her face is not a good idea. She was wearing a mask. In my dream, my mom was wearing a mask. And it felt so real. And it was like... She was trying to tell me something, but I couldn't understand her through the mask. All I could see of her face were her eyes. They were so wide. That scared me. I know it sounds silly, but it kind of makes me feel better to talk to you like this. Even though I know you won't get it till later. If at all. I just can't get her eyes out of my head. Selville's been getting up there again, Kat. We talked about this. Yeah, I know. Well, do you want to start paying it? No. Then dispense with the attitude and ease up on the long calls. Now, I had to hit record because I unplugged it from the box. I think it came from upstairs. I thought it was closer than that. 
outside, like car tires screeching. I'm gonna go upstairs and check. I'll check the garage. Any ghosties in here? Guess not. <laughs> Good looking. <laughs> oh God, shit! Dad! Oh, shit! Are you human? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a drag star. What's wrong? I saw something. Where? In there. In Jen's room? Yeah. Where? Right behind me. Nothing, Kitty. Something was in there. I know it. I saw it. Shadows, imagination. Dad! No. You've been in this from the start, and I appreciate that, but... I'm pretty sure that we heard a car outside that just turned into something that it wasn't. What are we going to tell Jen? There's nothing to tell Jen because there's nothing in her room. No, come on. Let's go downstairs and finish that movie. I know I saw something in her room. This is like half scary and half cool. It wouldn't be cool if I saw something in my room. I would be freaked out about that. <laughs> Shit. I wonder if there is something in my room. I thought I heard something up here, and both the girls were definitely out. It sounded a little bit like that screeching noise that we heard last night, but only this time it came from up here. Kat sleeps on the couch downstairs because she's thoroughly convinced that there's something in her room. I'm actually starting to wonder if all of this is... Someone will be home soon. It's better when others are here. Activity and noises. Familiar voices. But the right voices. The voices you're supposed to hear. Not Helen's voice. She... 
She always used to say my name like that when she was concerned about something. I don't think I can do this anymore. Look, Marcus, you've been drinking. You're not thinking she rationally. She sounded just... like she was mad. No, she didn't, Marcus. She's upset? No, she's not. She's disappointed. Marcus, she had a coronary. There's nothing you could have done to help her. She's in trouble. I can feel it. No, Marcus, look at me. Helen is not in trouble. Helen is dead. She's not with us any longer. She sounded so sad. She, she may be sad, Marcus. I don't know. I don't have the answers for you there. But what I do know is that you've been under a lot of stress lately. And you've been drinking heavily today, and the one thing you need now more than anything else is rest. I'm going to go ahead and dump the contents of the DVR and have my work-study students start going through it. I'll come back later and check on Marcus. Mark this point in the timeline as my first concerned event. He said that he heard voices. Voices? What does that mean? What do you think it means? What, in the day? What, ghosts are only allowed to speak at night? There are no ghosts in this house. Kitty. You haven't experienced any of the weird shit. Well, neither have you. I saw something upstairs. In your room, as a matter of fact. When was this? Yesterday. And was anyone going to tell me about it? Dad looked in your room and he didn't see anything. He said he didn't want to upset you. Yeah, well, I'm not upset, because you didn't see anything. Let's check the tape. Right now. Fine, let's check the tape. Uh, I've already taken the tapes to the department. It'll be a few days before they're dumped and prepped, but uh, we'll look at them then. I just don't know how we got here. Like, losing Mom wasn't enough? Now we have to deal with all this bullshit? Electromagnetic radiation detectors and motion field things. I just don't, we don't buy a crystal ball and all the goddamn things. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to.
This is what I found when I came in this morning. Second time, and they still probably won't believe me. You know what I found when I got up this morning? I have no idea. All the cabinet doors were open again. All of them? Yeah. Did you do it? Why would I do that? I don't know. You were kind of messed up last night. What happened? Let's just say that my imagination got the better part of me. David said that you heard voices. I don't know what I heard, Kat. What, what did they say? Can we just drop it, please? Sorry. The last thing that I did with Helen was go out to dinner. We used to like to go to this place downtown. I, I, I wanted to get pizza, but she convinced me that we needed to start, you know, watching our cholesterol, that we were gonna eat heart healthy. I wonder what she would have ordered if she knew it was her last meal. I dreamt about her last night. She was wearing a mask. You have to remember that I had no idea the amount of activity going on. It's been my experience that paranormal occurrences are generally more spread out. What happened in the Gates home over the course of a week is more than you will likely see in a few months even in a heavily populated location. Marcus and Jennifer's deteriorating emotional states probably heighten the situation. Like I said to them when I was setting up their equipment, these things often feed on our moods. Even if I had known and tried to do something else to help them, there's no way of knowing if we could have prevented what happened. Obviously, is 
okay? You okay? You okay, Jen? You okay? You okay? You okay? You okay? You okay? Are you feeling better? I don't feel better until I don't feel anything at all. Don't be like that. What did it look like? Huh? That thing you saw in my room. Jen, I don't know if we should really talk. Come on, Katie. I'm a believer now. Do your big sister some good and tell me what it looked like. It was really fast. I didn't really get a good look. It was just kind of shadowy. Look, David says he's gonna check it out. He has all the tapes in his lab on campus. Maybe he'll need some help. Stop. You know, you could ease up on that. Yeah, I know. That's why I stopped giving Dad shit about it. I just want things to be like they were. I know. Me too. It's not fair, Katie. I know. She was so young and healthy. Why did she have to go away? I don't know. And you're right. It's not fair. But I really think she's still here. I, I, I think she's still watching over us. I wish I could believe that. Okay, I, I just searched the whole house. Literally, from top to bottom. There is nobody in here. It's not the who's that I'm worried about, Dad. It's the what. It couldn't have been a dream, Jen. You two try to go to all this trouble to prove that there's something in this house, and then it smacks me on the ass and you try to downplay it? I'm not trying to downplay anything. Yes, you are! Okay, let's... Let's just say that some entity came in and sat on your bed and, and touched you. Your experience of it isn't documentation. I mean, even if it actually happened, you're no more proof in the real scientific world as, as, as a crazy person that talks to Elvis every night. That's why we have all this equipment. What, what they report, what they capture is, is irrefutable. They're, they're not people. They don't get emotional. They don't react. They just report. I believe you, honey. I really do. But somebody that's not your dad, somebody that, that doesn't know you, would blow out your claim from 20 different directions, and, and most people would side with them, especially in this area. Do you understand? Yeah. Really? You can see where I'm coming from? Yeah, Dad, I get it. I believe in the both of you. And don't ever think otherwise. Two of you mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, let's go back to bed. Huh? Whatever is going on here, we're going to find out what it is and we're going to beat it. I am not sleeping in my room. Okay, well, well, we'll get you set up with Katie in the living room. Yeah. You have class tomorrow? Yeah, I have two, but they're in the afternoon. What do you want? How? Where is it?
over here. And you shut always. I don't see it. I can't, I don't see it. It's too dark. Just talking to a bad man. Maybe it was a dream. I'm so tired. Can I get some sleep? something, but I couldn't understand her because she was all muffled. Or Jesus, Dad, what does this mean? I don't know. Well, find out! Find out how? I don't know, call one of your academia buddies, you know, David and his whole team. You're a professor. Everyone you know is in some kind of research. There's got to be someone doing something that can help us figure this out. It's not that easy. I mean, if your mother is here. If Mom's here, she's trying to warn us. Katie, go pack some things. Pack? Pack for what? We're going to stay at Aunt Linda's until all of this gets figured out. It's a bit extreme, don't you think? Jane? No, I don't, Dad! Now, Katie! It's six in the morning, Jennifer! I don't care! I am calling her! Jen, think about this! No, you think about it, Dad! You know, if, if, if Mom's trying to warn us, then we should get the hell out of here! But if it's all in our imagination, then there's no harm in freaking out about it somewhere else! What if she isn't trying to warn us? What if she's just trying to contact or are us? Are you feeling good about everything that's been going on lately? Even if there are ghosts, they really can't do anything. If they can touch you, Dad, they can hurt you! But Jen, it's Mom. We don't know that for sure. And if it is Mom, she wouldn't want us to stick around in this kind of situation. I used to think this was all bullshit from the beginning, Dad, but I just don't know now. They do know there is something going on in this house, and it is not good! I got a few things I gotta do. Maybe I'll catch up with you later. Yeah, Linda said she had plenty of space. Are you okay, Dad? I'm fine. Keep your girls drive safe. We will. Katie.
Okay. We haven't been back to the house since we found Dad's body. And we were gonna pack up David's stuff and we thought we should make one last entry. I don't know what this proves or doesn't prove, but I definitely believe that we both believe that there's something in this house and something that is not nice. We also believe that it it took both of our parents. I don't know what we're gonna do because I don't feel right selling the house knowing what I know, but I do know that I can't live here anymore. Absolutely not. I cannot spend another night in this house. So that's it. I mean, our mom's gone, and our dad's gone. I don't think we'll ever know what caused. Okay. We went through all the media and were shocked at what we discovered. Things that the Gates weren't even aware of. Did Marcus prove that there's something out there? 
Yes, I believe he did. But did he prove what? And that's just the tip of the skeptic's iceberg. But before you dismiss what you've just seen, I think you should take a look at a blow-up from one of the last frames shot in this series. And what you're about to see appears in one frame only. So that's it. I mean... Our mom's gone. And our dad's gone. I don't think we'll ever know what caused it.